This is It's Not What You Know. Hello, I'm Miles Jupp. It's often said that it's not what you know, it's who you know. This is why it's very easy to get the motivation to become a serial killer as long as you know what a lot of other people did last summer. <laughs> or why it's perfectly reasonable to say I may have lost the Labour leadership election in 2010 to my brother Ed, but who's laughing now? Uh. On this show, we refuse to take any interest in what you know, merely who you know, and I say this with gruelling inevitability, how well you know them. Each of our three guests has nominated someone they know well to answer a series of questions. Could be a friend, could be a family member, could simply be a complete stranger you came across in a Westfield shopping centre and, mm. emboldened by the dizzying array of leisure options available on site, challenged to an on-the-spot frame of ten-pin bowling, culminating in a fight, a bowl of chips, and an extended period of co-parenting. <laughs> If my guests can work out the answers their nominees gave, they could be strolling off with tonight's star prize, a 12-week course in French for business use under the ever-watchful tutelage of the legendary Bath, London Irish and England fly-half Mike Cat. Uh. <laughs> the course takes place in one of Great Yarmouth's most exclusive industrial estates, <laughs> with food parcels arriving on an almost bi-weekly basis. <laughs> and as their brochure points out, if it all gets too much for you, you are perfectly at liberty at any point to walk into the sea. Sadly, in order to stand even a chance of taking part in this wretched and desperate experience, you'll have to go through the at best comparable ordeal of playing It's Not What You Know. So please welcome tonight's contestants. They are Catherine Ryan, Christopher Biggins and Romish Ranganathan. <laughs> Catherine Ryan, comedian, actress, presenter and, let's not mince our words about it, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, a Canadian. <laughs> Very much one of those comedians who was not afraid to go to those places other comics fear to tread. For instance, she recently did a gig in Corby. Uh, <laughs> Catherine, how did you decide on your nominee for tonight? Easy. She's northern. Ooh, everyone. Uh, yeah. Handily ticks of oxhorse. She's athletic. Ooh. She's strong and beautiful and really good at her job. Ooh. Do you want me to keep it. going? I can keep going. Her hair is long. She has a twin. <laughs> Let's see who it is. My name's Rianne. I'm partner strategy for a data science company. Um, I live in London, and I know Kat from many years ago when we used to work together. Yes, it is your good friend, Rianne Coburn. Yay! <laughs> Next, we welcome Christopher Biggins, actor, impresario, TV and radio personality, and a man whose performances as Widow Twanky are so uh -oh. definitive that they frequently leave audiences vowing they never need to see another pantomime <laughs> again. He is to the British cultural scene what the pillars are to the Acropolis, that is to say, very clearly visible. Uh, <laughs> Christopher, how did you pick your nominee for this evening? Well, she's one of my best friends. She is really lovely. She's Jewish. Ooh. <laughs> she's not only a comedy actress, but she's also a very good straight actress. Well, let's find out who it is. My name is Leslie Joseph. I'm an actress. I live in London and I've known Biggins for 30 years. Yes, it is Christopher's friend and star of Birds of a Feather, Leslie Joseph. <laughs> Finally, we welcome Ramesh Ranganathan, stand-up comedian and former maths teacher, a man who has kept a register but to the best of our knowledge is not on one. <laughs> Although I should point out that if he subsequently turns out to be on one, my confident statements to the country should not be considered a BBC cover-up. Um, <laughs> basically, hedge your bets. Uh, this year, uh, Ramesh appeared on Channel 4's election coverage, uh, a programme that consisted of numerous comedians queuing up to throw buckets of water on the burning remains of Jeremy Paxman's reputation. <laughs> um, Ramesh, who's your nominee this evening? Uh, my nominee is you know, one of the people that I'm closest to. Um, in the world. I've, I've known him for a bit. He's better looking than me, he's younger than me, he's funnier than me. So in many ways I should have had him killed by now. Um, <laughs> Let's see who you've picked. My name's Dinesh. I'm a project manager for an aviation firm. I live in Crawley and uh, Ramesh is in fact my brother. This is your brother Dinesh. In round one, we ask your nominees some questions to find out what they know about you. Uh, you have to try and guess what answers they might possibly have given. Catherine Ryan, you're first in line tonight. Now, before you became one of this country's finest stand-up comedians, I'm told that you were one of Canada's finest waitresses. Where was that? I was a corporate trainer for Hooters. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, and I don't regret my time there. It's not something that I would do again. But when you're a young girl, you don't know that your mission in life is not to be a decoration. I'm working very hard to change that now. But uh, I worked there. I traveled all over the world opening Hooners. I opened the one in Nottingham. You're welcome. <laughs> I should just say, if any Radio 4 listeners are unaware of Hooters, um, it is, I suppose, uh, like a harvester, but with an even more sexually charged atmosphere. (laughs) With your past in mind, uh, we asked your mate Rianne, uh, what did Catherine like most about working in Hooters? What do you think she said? There are many things I like about Hooters, and I have shared. This is what's special about Rianne and dangerous. She knows the many details of my life. I mean, oh, see, I'm torn because I was a corporate trainer and you're not supposed to say, you know, you're supposed to say the friendships because I, I'm still friends with a lot of the young women that I met there and they've gone on to do great things. You're supposed to say the camaraderie and the, the sunshine and the chicken. But um, <laughs> Rianne and I both know that it was the money. Okay, let's find out, Rianne. Probably how much the customers really liked her. Oh. There was a lot of quite unusual men and I think they liked her a lot. (laughs) That's nice, too. The quite quite unusual men um, liked you a lot. Uh, Yes, Catherine was well-liked by many of the Hooters customers who became very much her bosom buddies. And uh, (laughs) if that joke doesn't end up on Pick of the Week, then I am personally going to take a dump through someone's letterbox. (laughs) I don't know who's yet, but uh, if I were Alan Yentob, I'd be putting paper down. Um, (laughs) No points. Next, it's the turn of Christopher Biggins. Christopher, one of the many things that you're famous for is your record of considerable achievement in the field of pantomime. Uh, We asked your old pal, Leslie Joseph, given an infinite choice, who would Christopher most like to appear in a pantomime with? Who do you think she went for? I... That's an interesting one. I wonder... I think it might be her. I think it might be Leslie Joseph. We've never done a pantomime together. We talked about doing one. Um, we work for the same producer, but we're, I think we're too expensive to go together. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? This, this has taken into consideration the money, and we're both sort of top liners, and, uh, <laughs> and I don't think you can afford us. Uh, but I think probably she would have said herself. Uh, right, fascinating insight into the business. Yes. Um, <laughs> OK, uh, let's see. Leslie, who's Christopher's dream co star? Me! Gosh, could you, could you possibly hold the receiver slightly further away? Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, very well done indeed. Leslie Joseph felt the person you would most like to be in a pantomime with is herself. There is a worry that there may have been a misunderstanding. Uh, Leslie may have confused our idle inquiry with a verbal contract. Um, I do hope she's not currently waiting outside the Plymouth Mayflower dressed as half of a horse and demanding higher billing. Um, two points. And now, the bearded Adonis that is Ramesh Ranganathan. Uh, Ramesh, we asked your brother Dinesh, if they made a film of the life of Ramesh Ranganathan... Could easily happen. Wow. Who would play Ramesh? Who do you think your brother went for? Uh, ben Kingsley. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, did, he, he was that in the play, uh, but I don't know if I'd move him to the film. <laughs> um, wow, that's an interesting one. I imagine Dinesh would try and say... I mean, I, I reckon he'd say something. I, I think he'd say one of two people. I think he'd either say... <laughs> Will Smith... Uh-huh. <laughs> Or Eddie Murphy. (laughs) And I think he'd go Will Smith. That's my guess. He'd have to sort of brown down or something. (laughs) I don't think you can't say that on this show, can you? Sorry. (laughs) Just cut that out, snip that out. Sorry. I I can't. (laughs) Um, (laughs) What uh, what do you reckon, Dinesh? Marcus Bridgestock. Marcus Brigstock, he said. I mean, I was hoping for a bit more glamour than that, do you know what I mean? No, no offence to Marcus, but come on, mate. <laughs> yeah, he could have gone for absolutely anyone. Uh, Hopkins, Sheen, Neeson, uh, but Dinesh went for dangerous Neeson. satirical firebrand Marcus Brigstock. Um, always got one eye on the budget. Um, uh, no. No points. Uh, Catherine, we understand that in addition to being a comedian and former waitress, you're also a big fan of Beyonce. Yes. Uh, you are a big fan. Uh, just so Radio 4 listeners are aware, Beyonce uh, is a sort of, um, sort of 21st century Billie Holiday. Uh, 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 <laughs> never off my cassette deck. Uh, 
Now, due to your intense fandom, uh, we asked your friend Rianne the following question. If Catherine could be Beyonce for a day, what's the first thing she'd do? What do you imagine she said, Rianne? What is the first thing I would do? I'd be all I ever wanted to be. I'd have it all. I'd be a strong, powerful, beautiful black woman. <laughs> I think I'd leave Jay-Z, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea Jay-Z was such a controversial figure amongst Radio 4 listeners. Is... Oh, wow, you should listen to you and yours. It's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost all they phone in about. I could be wrong, but I think she and Blue Ivy should go it alone. That's what I think. Yeah, she'd be like, get out of here, Jay. I can do this by myself. I'll need you. That is absolutely the best Jenny Murray I have uh... ever... Uh, uh, OK, let's, uh, let's find out. If Catherine could be Beyoncé for a day, what's the first thing she'd do? You have sex with Jay-Z? <laughs> I would, I would. That's how I leave men. <laughs> <laughs> that is how I leave men. Like is a it... black widow. <laughs> yes, if uh, Catherine was Beyoncé for a day, uh, according to Rianne, she'd have sex with uh, Jay-Z. Um, I wasn't aware you had to be Beyonce to do that. There we are. And um, I'd, lean no. in, I'd lean in and be like, get your stuff out. Would you, would you say this face-to-face -face or down the phone? or would you? I'd be having sex with him, Miles. Oh, I see. So it, it would not be face-to-face. -face. <laughs> I did not think you'd be the dirty one, Catherine. <laughs> but that is... I would love that to be on Pick of the Week. That particular change. <laughs> I'm going to give you one point for showing and graphically describing your working. Um, Christopher, it's your turn. We asked Leslie, of all his many achievements, from I, Claudius to Celebrity Antiques Road Trip, what is Christopher's proudest career moment? Well, I know this because I... I this, you, you may find this very odd because I have done some fabulous things in my life. <laughs> I used to be an actor and I was a rather good actor and... Uh, it's been marvelous, but the best thing I've ever done, the thing I'm proudest of, is I'm a celebrity get me out of here. <laughs> I mean, you know, I was a, a 60 year old man who won that show. I'm the king of the jungle. Did you know I was king of the jungle? I did know that. Did you, yeah. you, did you know? Uh, I had a suspicion. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I am wearing a grass skirt under here. So. No, and I really, I, honestly, it was a, 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 if you talk to anybody who's been in there, they say it is the most extraordinary experience. And we, honestly, it was fantastic. And that's my answer. Uh, well, let's see what Leslie thought. Probably winning I'm a Celebrity. Oh. Oh. Very good. Well, they, they do say that show is a great way to relaunch uh, a career. Sure enough, eight years later, here you are on Radio 4's ninth, <laughs> ninth most popular panel show. Um, have you got any fond memories of The Jungle? It, uh, basically, any anecdotes, bang them out, Christopher. It doesn't, yeah. doesn't matter if you've already used them on this morning. This show can't be picky. I tell you, um, the interesting thing about that show is that you see one hour of our 24 hours in there, and the most extraordinary thing is the boredom. It is totally boring. There is nothing to do. Nothing to read. You can't read the Bible. <laughs> uh, there's nothing to watch, nothing to listen to, only your fellow contestants, who can be very, very annoying. Um, and, uh, but it, it sort of makes you go on another plane, and you're able to do things like sleeping with 200 rats mm. of an evening, or... You dirty boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it like... Or eat a kangaroo's penis. And as I said, said at the time, I've had worse things in my mouth. Um, <laughs> That's top line of material. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you do that during the matinees? That one? Is that... <laughs> Two points. And now, the bearded Adonis that is Ramesh Ranganathan. Uh, Ramesh, we asked your brother Dinesh, uh, who is Ramesh's all-time comedy hero? What might he have said? Well, I mean, I've got a tattoo of Richard Pryor on my arm. So if he didn't say that, yes. I'm going to kill him. I can uh, see it. Because otherwise it would been a waste of time. Yeah, Richard Pryor. My oldest son thinks it's me. He thinks I've got a tattoo of myself on my own arm. He's <laughs> asking me when I'm going to get the glasses put on, like I couldn't pay for it all to be done in one go. Uh, I thought you had a skin problem. <laughs> I, I was wondering... <laughs> I moved slightly like... away from you, actually. <laughs> no, no, it's lovely. It's very nice. <laughs> 
D- Dinesh, who is Ramesh's all-time comedy hero? Richard Pryor. Yay! Very good indeed. Yes, Richard Pryor, he is your comedy hero, and you do indeed have a tattoo of him on your arm. Uh, it makes, makes sense. For very similar reasons, I've often considered having the Baron Knights on my buttocks. <laughs> Well, it's the end of the first round, Uh, so let's look at the scores, which, as usual on It's Not What You Know, have been independently verified by some people that we know, in this case, the Central Council of Church Bell Ringers. Uh, Met up with them early this week. Let me tell you, they are a great bunch of lads and not afraid to discuss their dongs in public. We had a pretty pretty lively evening. Uh, Suffice to say, we were still in Nando's well after chucking out time. Uh, arguing the toss about every bell under the sun. Uh, front door, back door, sleigh, tubular, Martin, taco, Ian Ronald, uh, and of course, Uz Palsy. Um, anyway, a remarkable night, although sadly not one you could pay me to repeat. And we can see that in third place is Catherine, in second place is Ramesh, and right out in front, it's Christopher! So, round two, we've already found out just how well the nominees know the panellists. Now we're going to see how well the panellists know their nominees. We start this round with Catherine Ryan. Catherine, uh, let's test your knowledge of your friend, Rianne Coburn. We asked Rianne, Rianne, if you had the chance to commit any crime and get away with it, what would it be? What do you think she said? All right. Rianne Coburn (laughs) is uh, a lady of scrupulous moral honesty. I'm thinking maybe immigration fraud. (laughs) <laughs> because she has loved men from abroad before. <laughs> and she will again. <laughs> um, and, but that's following your heart. That's the kind of gal Rianne is. Uh-huh. Um, like Ramesh, Rianne is a vegetarian. I think that Rianne might get arrested for doing some kind of PETA Greenpeace act against dolphin hunters. <laughs> Rianne would only uh, commit a crime if it were protecting someone else. Like an animal. Uh, okay, so taking a moral stance in order to commit a crime. If, she, if an immigrant boyfriend has been attacked by a, an animal, what would she do then? She'd choose the animal. She'd choose the animal. <laughs> Just good to know, isn't it? Okay, well, uh, let's hear Ian's crime of choice. Oh, probably, like, being in the, like, lads' dressing room as, like, a Premier League football match <laughs> sort of having a look. Being in the lads' changing with a Premier League match and just having a look. <laughs> <laughs> what um, impressive morals she has, Catherine. You know her so well. She would be protecting women from being snatched up by these evil premiership footballers. <laughs> I think it's a very positive moral stance she's taken. Um, but no points. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no points. Uh, Christopher, you're up next. Uh, let's see how well you know Leslie. We asked her, Leslie, what is your most overused word? What do you think she said? Her most overused word. Oh. <laughs> Darling. <laughs> okay, uh, let's find out. Leslie. Uh, darling, probably. Very good. <laughs> so good. What, what did he just say? I just said this is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> just because he's a top liner, uh, he's getting uh, easy uh, questions. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. What crime of any crime, and then this one, what overused work? Come on, mate. Well, she didn't get the points for that. No, that's what oh, I'm saying. Oh, I see, right, right, that's what right. I'm saying. We're being... This is Biggins is being pushed to the top here. <laughs> getting all these questions. Oh, what, what do you think Leslie said was your first name? <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, don't gang up on Christopher. No, no, hey, look, please. he just happens to be doing better than you, Ramesh. <laughs> OK. Not just in this, also in life. <laughs> <laughs> now... Um, you two should do a panto together. You, we could, you could play. You could play his son. Yeah, yeah. There, there'd be no budget issues then. <laughs> um, another question now for Ramesh Ranganathan. We uh, want to see how well you know your brother Dinesh. We asked him, "What is your least favourite UK town?" Well, um, he hasn't. He's not been around the UK that much, my brother. He sort of he, he, when he, whenever he goes anywhere, it's normally abroad. So I'd imagine it's a town near us. We both live in Crawley. Um, I imagine he could say, could possibly say Crawley, but um, this is a very difficult... I'm going to say Hawley. I think that's a mistake. <laughs> Why uh, do you think it's a mistake, Bigan? Because I think Brighton. He'd like, I think he's Brighton as the city. 
Hold on, is this the one he least likes? It's least favourite. Least least oh, his least favourite. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to stick with, with Hawley, despite the with attempt. Hawley. Hawley. With Hawley. Hawley. H-O-R-L-E-Y. Yeah. The fact H. you've asked to double-check that suggests that I've not got the correct answer. But <laughs> what about, what let's, about... just, um, let's just carry on with this charade and see I, what's uh, happening. I wouldn't read too much into it, Ramesh. Um, <laughs> tell us, Dinesh. Crawley. <laughs> Uh, Have Crawley. Some pride, you moron. Crawley. <laughs> now, I'm afraid he has no time for his hometown of Crawley, uh, choosing to overlook the County Mall shopping centre, uh, a modern three story library, a Grade One listed Quaker meeting house, and no fewer than 14 different sets of public lavatories. Um, <laughs> which, when you think about it, per capita, not at all bad. I'll tell you the best one. <laughs> yeah. Is in the County Mall, yeah. the food court right at the back, yeah. mm. just before you get to the. Uh, the Mini Mayhem soft play centre. Those toilets, delightful. Hardly anybody knows about them. They're checked so regularly, it's better than going at home. <laughs> well, and yet he still doesn't like the town. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the end of that round, and as ever on It's Not What You Know, the scores have been independently verified by someone that we know. Uh, in this case, the novelist and critic Alain de Botton. Um, <laughs> met up with him earlier this week. I have to say, he is a great bunch of lads. Um, <laughs> We went to Madame Tussauds, uh, possibly a mistake in retrospect, as it turns out Elaine has an irrational phobia of waxworks and a fierce hatred of anyone who works in customer service. <laughs> um, I don't really know why he chose the venue in the first place. I ended up having to make numerous apologies for his outrageous behaviour and spending rather more time than I bargained for picking rubbers up off the floor of the gift shop. Um, <laughs> He'll probably write a book about it. I won't be buying it. <laughs> and we can see that in third place is Catherine. In second place is Ramesh. Still way out in front is our current leader, Christopher. Well, round three. This round is called... The Big One. Uh, in this round, each panellist will have to answer a single big question about their chosen nominee. This is the round that sorts the wheat from the chaff, the sheep from the goats, the cheekily un-PC from the genuinely racist. <laughs> and because the stakes are so high, it's worth an incredible four points. Ooh. This week, our big question is, what is your nominee's favourite flavour of crisp? Now, I know what you're thinking. I can see what you're thinking. This is more drama than I bargained for. Well, I've got two pieces of advice for you. Think about your nominees. Huh? Think about crisps. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine, you're first up. Uh, what do you reckon is the chosen crisp flavour of your old mucker, Brianne Coburn? Uh, I'm really torn. She's too colourful to just go for plain salted. So it's going to be cheese and onion or salt and vinegar. And I feel as though it's going to be salt and vinegar. Let's find out. Cheese and onion. Oh! <laughs> oh, the tension. Oh, <laughs> did I not speak of drama? Oh. Uh, she went for cheese and onion. I did, oh, good Lord. If everything is surprising as that, I, I fear for my bladder. I um, should have known. With the bags of cheese at work, I should have known. She used to eat whole onions as well. Really? And potatoes that she'd sliced up. The whole... <laughs> oh. uh, no point, sadly. Ramesh, thinking about your brother, Dinesh, what is his favourite crisp flavour? Um, well, sort of, my instincts lead me down two possibilities. He's always been a massive fan of the pickled onion monster munch mm -hmm. and insists that that is... I would say that he thinks that's the best crisp that's ever been created. However, he does have a, a, a taste for chilli. So that's thrown a little bit of a jalapeno spanner in the works, if you, if, <laughs> if you will, because he sort of likes those chilli and lemon... You know the chilli and lemon crisps that you Delicious. can get? Oh, he loves, he loves some nice. of that. Oh, they're great. Mm. They're great. Delicious. Yeah. He takes them to the cinema, sort of smuggles them in, and then opens it up as like a chemical weapon. <laughs> <laughs> In the theatre. But I am going to go Pickled Onion Monster Munch. OK, Dinesh. Pickled Onion Monster Munch. Yeah! <laughs> pickled Onion Monster Munch. Well, that, uh, goodness me. Honestly, if I wasn't hosting this show, I'd be in the front row, on my feet, throwing everything I could lay my hands on. <laughs> oh, Christopher, it's all down to you. What is Leslie's favourite crisp flavour? I think, without any doubt, I'm going to go for the alternative salt and vinegar. 
Salt and vinegar. Salt and vinegar. Salt and vinegar. Oh man, this is it's it's tense it's up it's here. Penalty shootout stuff. Um, if that's what they're called. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> let's see if you're right, Leslie. Ordinary. It would be ordinary. <laughs> ordinary. <laughs> what mean... a bitch! <laughs> I mean... She's never, ever had an ordinary crisp in her life. Well, I mean, what, what is ordinary for... I mean, for all we know, she could be talking about crisps that have been dipped in truffle oil and then dried in the sun on the back of a eunuch. We have no way... <laughs> so, it's the end of the show. The points have been gathered in and totted with a violence that had UN observers positively wincing. And, as ever, on It's Not What You Know, the scores have been independently verified by some people that we know. In this case, the shadowy collection of politicians and financiers known as the Bilderberg Group. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, Met up with them early this week. I have to say they are a great bunch of lads. Um, they were all there. Obama, Cameron, Yuta Motolenghi, all the big hitters. Uh, all piled into a minivan, headed out to an out-of-town pretzo. And um, had a fantastic evening planning international conflicts. And um, without giving away any spoilers, all I would say is I would not want to be Swedish right now. Um, a thoroughly enjoyable night. And as I always say, you know you've had a good time when you end up getting bundled out of the van by the side of the road with the instruction that if you breathe a word about this to anyone, you will be killed. And the final score show that in third place is Catherine. But in joint first place, on their way, arm in arm, to say a cheeky bonjour to Mike Cat, it is Christopher and Ramesh. There you go. Despite all the bitterness, Ramesh, you got there in the end. It's an uh, honour to be. You know, joint first alongside somebody who I consider is one of the <laughs> premier <laughs> widow twankies <laughs> in the country. So thank you very much. By the way, I'm in Nottingham Theatre Royal this year. <laughs> and there's a Hooters there. <laughs> <laughs> it is absolutely the perfect evening. Um, so thank you to our panellists, Catherine Ryan and her friend Rianne, Christopher Biggins and his friend Leslie, Ron Mishranga Nathan and his brother Dinesh. Thank you to you for listening. I guess after all that, it just goes to show it's not what you know. It's Not What You Know was hosted by me, Miles Jack. The script was written by myself and James Kettle. The producer was Matt Strong and it was a BBC Radio Comedy production. <laughs>